Hello, my name is Rob Garner. I'm a computer programming instructor, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to make a Blazor application. So I'm going to start off by opening up Visual Studio, and we're going to create a new project. And if you built Blazor web applications before, you might have seen um, there's a there was a WASM application and a server application. Those have both been combined into Blazor Web Application. So I'm just going to pick Blazor Web App. My school has a student organization called Hackerspace. So I'm going to make a website uh, for them. And um, you can, of course, pick where you want to store it on yours. And click next. As of the creation of this video, .NET 8 was the most uh, current version. Um, it's the long-term support version. The uh, odd number versions are supported for one year. The even number versions are supported for two years. I'm going to go ahead and add individual accounts. We Eventually, I'm going to go over how to do use authentication. So I'm going to put this into this project right now. We'll see that it'll add uh, some additional items, but uh, we will just uh, we will ignore those initially, and then later on we'll learn how to use authentication. Um, we do want to be configured for HTTPS, and um, for render mode, there are several when render modes. Uh, the, the server and web assembly. Um, server is very similar to some, you know, your usual model view controller frameworks. The uh, web assembly is similar to what you've seen in a lot of uh, single page application frameworks. And the difference is that when you render from the server side, all most of the code is running on the server. It tends it has some great security implications because the uh, code tends to run behind a firewall when you're um, but it, it, it tends to be less immediate when you're making code using WebAssembly it uh, you'll you'll tend to be creating more server side I mean client side code and that client side code will take a little bit longer to download but will provide much more immediate response to the users um, it'll also offload your um, workload from the server to the user's uh, client machine. So, that, But there are some security implications from that because you cannot secure things reliably on the client end. So there's some advantages and disadvantages of both of these approaches. The auto approach allows you to combine both of these methods um, and um, essentially what you'll be able to do is you can actually make pages that will start off uh, as, as statically rendered and then become server side pages and then become WebAssembly pages um, through their life cycle of uh, their the presentation to the user's client machine. And, um, and so this gives you the ability to use the best of both worlds. So we're going to pick auto so that we can see all the features uh, in all the different render modes for Blazor. Interactivity can be specified either globally or per page component. It makes sense if you're going to be using auto and you're going to um, to do this per page. Um, uh, if you, if you uh, specify it globally, that means that all the pages will tend to be, will use one mode. So we're going to specify per page. And obviously, you can you can change these things once you you set them. This is just setting what the default behavior is going to be. So we're going to set our be default behavior to be auto and per page. And uh, you can choose whether or not you want to include sample pages. For our purposes, we want them there because we're learning, and it's useful to have some samples in place. And uh, you. Uh, 
the top level statement feature that Microsoft has put in place allows you to not necessarily have to have all the namespaces and class definitions at the top of your page. I'm going to, um, so this is kind of a, a double negative. You're, if you say do not use top level statements, that it, and you check that, it in fact means that you will see top level statements there. The, what this is saying is do not use the top level statements feature. The top level statements feature in, involves not seeing the top level statements. So I, I want to see them in a, an education setting because um, so that we can see what's happening. Once you understand what they do, it uh, it makes it nice to remove them to to reduce the clutter uh, in your your application. But when you're starting, uh, at least at the level I teach, um, I think it's useful for students to see it. If if you're brand new, it may be nice to not see them at all because it can add some confusion when you you haven't coded before. But once you start understanding how things are structured, initially it's good to see how to see all those additional statements, and then you can make them go away again later. Uh, Aspire is uh, something that uh, 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 I will add to this later on, so I'm not going to put that on right away. Uh, Aspire can be added to a project afterwards, so we're going to leave that one disabled. Okay, so once we have our application built, uh, you'll notice that we have two projects within this solution. The first one is our server project, and the second one is our WebAssembly client project. And I will go over this in detail in the next video. Thank you very much.